part four of our four loop series and we're going to be looking at a financial example. The beauty of for loops is that because they do a calculation or formula all the time for a certain number of times, that becomes quite nice whenever we've got a financial example or any complicated calculation that we need to repeatedly do a certain number of times. And so that's where we're really going to see the power of these for loops. So let's take an, a scenario. Let's say I want to save up money for an overseas trip and I've got a particular scenario of how I can save up my money. Now please take note, all financial examples or any complicated example will be different depending on its scenario and the way it's calculated. But the key is if you can get the initial calculation working for the first scenario, for the first iteration of the loop, and then the loop will repeatedly do that calculation however many times, then you can get it to do exactly what you want it to do. So let's take a scenario where we want to save some money in a bank account. Okay, so what do we need? Uh, well, we need to know how the number of months, how, how many months are we going to be uh, saving for, and so how many times does this calculation need to be done? So that'll be for our for loop. Then we're going to have to invest money into a bank account. Let's say I can save money. I'm a, I, I've been looking at my, my budget, and I've got a certain amount of money that I'm willing to put into the bank account every month. So how much money am I going to add every month to this savings account? Then the bank will give me an interest rate, some sort of uh, amount that they will give me to store my money in the bank. So how much interest is added on every month? Uh, so that they, they're willing to give me some extra money as long as I keep saving money into the bank account. And then I need to know how much money am I starting with now. For this example, we're just going to probably be starting with very little money. Uh, probably even not. So how much money do we start with? So I'm going to start off with zero money. So those are what we're going to be needing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to store the amount of money that is in the bank account in its own separate uh, variable. So I'm going to have a total saved variable, which is going to be how much money is in the bank account so that I can keep it separate from how much I started with. Um, it's not so much important in this scenario, but later on when you get to conditional loops, that becomes quite a a nice little tool that can help you with other types of calculations. But for now, we're just going to have a separate variable that's going to store how much is currently in the bank account. That will be telling me how much is being stored in the bank account after every month. So how much money have we stored? So we're going to start, so start there with zero because we've got no money to save at the moment. Okay, so that's great. So then let's move on. Let's say if we're going to do the calculation, we want to save for two years. Let's say if we're going to go in holiday two years time, so that's going to be 24 months. And I've looked at my budget and I can save about 500 Rand every month. Now, let's say the bank says they will give me a 5.2% interest extra every month. Now, please take note that is a very high interest rate. Um, no one's, I don't think, it's ever going to give you that much. Uh, so... Don't believe that type of money. Let's say I've got a special bank that's going to give me 5.2% interest in this sense. So let's have a look. So I'm going to make a table here and I'm going to try to work out what the, the answers are going to be for the first couple of months. Um, because when we run our code and we see the results, we need to make sure that it's producing the right results. Um, so let's, let's just try to figure out what we're going to put in here. So let's say, okay, so the, the number of months, we're going to put the 24 in there and we're going to save our monthly... Uh, Payments of 500 Rand a month, um, our interest rate is going to be 5.2% and our total save starts off being a zero. So th that's what we have so far. And we can just refer to those values with our calculations. Um, so let's move on. So now we need to work out which month we are in and the interest rate. So the, the month that we're in, that's going to be the for loop that's going 1, 2, 3, up until 24. So we want to repeatedly do a calculation 24 times if we're going to the same calculation. If, if, if these all stay constant, constant, if our interest rate and our monthly payments all stay the same and the calculation stays the same, we should be able to see like some sort of compound interest that's happening. Okay, so let's have a look. So we, we're going to start off with month one. So this is the first month. We've got zero in our bank account. We're going to save 500 Rand. We're going to get 5.2% interest. So let's, let's, what's the calculations involved? As I said, every financial example will be different in the way it's calculated. Let's see what I want to do for this one. Let's say we first want to work, we first want to add our monthly payments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my monthly payments and add it to how much I've currently got saved. That makes sense, right? So I take that 500 Rand and I take how much I've saved, which is nothing at the moment. 
and I add them together and I've got 500 Rand. Now, where do I want to put that 500 Rand? Well, I want to, I don't want to store it in a brand new variable. That's what I'm, I'm that's the total that I've saved. I want to put it back into total saves. So basically, I'm taking that 500 and adding it onto the total saved. So I take the total saved, add on the 500. So we add in our monthly payment. So that's our first step. Okay. Our second step will be to calculate the interest. So, so we are, in this scenario, we're basically saying I'm putting in my money before the interest is calculated. In other scenarios, you might have to work out the interest and put the saving at the same time. So like, so as I said, every scenario will be different and they, and they will give you the specs if they ever ask you a type of question like this. So step two, we want to work out how much interest have we, have we been given by the bank. So we know it's 5.2%, but it's 5.2% of what is currently saved. So our interest amount, take the interest rate. Now it's 5.2%. How do I convert it into an actual number? Well, you divide it by 100, and we're going to multiply. It's 5.2% of the total saved. In other words, multi multiplied by the total saved. So we're going to take the total saved, which is 500 Rand. We're going to take 5.2%, divided by 100 to make it the percentage, times it by the 500 Rand. How much money is that? 5.2% of 500, it's 26 Rand. That's how much money the bank's going to give me at the end of month one. So 26 Rand is the interest amount. So what do I do with that 26 Rand? Well, I'm going to take that, and this is step three, I'm going to take the money that I've saved so far, which is 500 Rand, which is literally just the, the, the deposit that, or the, not the deposit, the monthly payment for this month, and I'm going to take that interest and I'm going to add them together. And where am I storing it? I'm storing that back into total saved. Okay, so there you can see our total saved has changed. So at the end of month one, I should have 526 Rand. I've, I've put in the 500 Rand for my monthly payment, and the bank gave me 26 Rand interest. That should be the result after month one. Fantastic. Now let's go to month two. Okay, so month two, we are wanting to do the exact same three steps. So the first step, if you remember, was to take our monthly payments and add it to the total saved. Now it's not going to be the the note that we started off with it's going to be that variable that's constantly being changed so we're taking that 500 rand and we're not adding it to zero we add it to what was saved at the end of month one which luckily is still stored in t total saved that's why we keep adding on to total saved because i don't want to every time calculate total saved as what it was in month one i want it to be what the last value was so in this case it is month one but when i get to month three i want to use the values from month two when i get to month four i want to use the values from month three you want to use the previous the latest value of total saved so i'm going to take that 526 rand and add the 500 rand monthly deposit monthly payment into it and that's going to be go back into total saved so my total saved although it was 526 at the end of month one i'm putting 500 into it and now it's going to be 1026 but that was only step one. Step two was to work out the interest. And that was whatever was the total saved multiplied by the 5.2%. Now, our total saved is what is currently in our bank account at the moment, which is the 1,026. Not the value that we used in month one, but the value that it is now. And we take 5.2% of that. And what is it? It's about 53 Rand and 35 cents. We probably have to round it so that we get to the cents value over here. And what do we do? We're going to put that into interest amount. So that's the actual amount the bank's gonna give me. And what do I do? I give, take that interest amount, and step three, I'm gonna add it on to the total saves. The total saves 1,026, take that 53 and 35 cents, and add it on to my 1,026. And that value is going back into total saved, and that's going to be the value at the end of month two. And then I continually do this process, and I've gone ahead and done it, those are the values that we should be expecting. So we should get those numbers when we run our program. So let's write the, let's go do the program and see if we get the same results. So we're looking for a 2403218. Are you going to remember the number? 2403218. Let's see if we remember that number when we do our calculation. So here we've got our program. We've got a little program where we can type in the monthly payment, which is 500. There's our interest rate, how many months, and our starting deposit. So I've just gone ahead and I've extracted all those values into variables and I've made a nice little heading. And what I've done, remember I said, well, that's the starting amount. I want to keep that separate. So I'm going to be putting all the, the, whatever's in the bank account into a variable called R saved. You'll notice R saved is a real because we're dealing with currency. So R saved gets initialized to whatever the deposit is. 
in this case it will be a zero so take that zero put it into r saves so r saves is now a default of zero and we are going to do this calculation for 24 months so we can have a variable called r that's going to go from 1 till 24. But where do we get the 24 from? We get the 24 from the number of months variable. So they will type in however many months they want to calculate. The reason why I use variables better, instead of just, because then I can adapt the numbers in the, in the spin edit and it will recalculate based on a new scenario. So this is my for loop that we want to do every single time. So what are we going to do? We want to do step one. What was step one, if you remember correctly? Step one was when we took our payment, our, our payment, that's our 500 Rand, and we want to add it, we want to add it onto the R saved. So R saved plus the payment. That's what we want to do. Take that 500 Rand and add it to what we saved. And where did we want to, we want to store it back into R saved. I don't want to store it into a brand new variable because then that variable is not going to change every single month. I need to see that, that, that R saved. I want to see it growing after every month because its value in month three is dependent on the values from month two. The values from month 17 are dependent on the values from month whatever the previous value was in 16. So we want to continually change that R saved. So there we go. We've done that step one. Now step two was to work out the interest. I've got a variable for the interest amount. There are interest amount. There's the interest rate variable. But the actual interest amount, the actual the interest rate is a percentage. The interest amount is how much money that percentage represents. Equals our interest rate, if you remember correctly, divided by 100 because we need to convert it to an integer. Convert it to an integer. Not, no, not convert it to an integer. Convert to a percentage. We're not going to say when you say R, oh, you don't say times 5.2, you times about 0.05. That's what the percentage is. So divided by 100 makes it a percentage. We want 5.2% of what is in the bank account, which is the R saved value. That's the of is the times. So the interest amount is the 5.2% of the R saved. That's going to be stored in there. And then we're going to take that interest amount. And we're going to add it to R saved. And we want to put that answer, we're going to put that answer back into R saved. Okay. Now a little trick here, because this is going to give me some sort of number that's quite got quite a few decimal places. I'm going to round two here. Um, if you remember round two, I've already added a math at the top, which means we can use round two. And then we're going to say to how many decimal places. If you wanted two decimal places, you put a negative two, if I remember correctly. So there we go. There's the negative two. So round it to two, negative two places so that we can use cents. Okay. So there we go. So we've worked out the three. And then we're going to display it now. So let's go memo display.lines.add. What are we displaying? We're displaying the month, which is going to be one, two, three. That's our for loop variable. And then I want to put a hash nine. And then we're going to display the actual money saved, which is our, our saved value. Now, our, obviously, our integer variable here is convert from an int to a string. And our, our saved is a float. So let's convert a real float to string f. And because I want to display it as a currency. So we're going to display it as ff currency, comma, 8, comma, Okay, now I don't know. So that's, that's basically the scenario. So we've taken step one. So we basically just worked it out for one month and then let the loop repeatedly do it for every single month after that. And because we've taken a value and added onto itself, that's how we get in that compound uh, value, that compound interest effect of the month is actually growing. If I used a completely different variable there, if I said whatever was in R saved, let's say it was the 500 Rand, and I used a different variable there, then we would be using, the, um, the variable wouldn't be changing, it wouldn't be increasing. So let's have a look and see if we get the same results. Let's, if you remember, we set up 24 months, it should be 24032.18. There we go, we did get our right amount. And what's nice about this program is we can change these values. Let's say I get given 2,000 Rand for a deposit from a family member. 
And if I do it now, you can see the value gets calculated based on a 2,000 Rand deposit. And you can see how much more money you would have had if you had a 2,000 Rand deposit or if you get a better interest rate or if you're willing to save a bit more money every month. You can see how much more money you will get at the end of the two years. So there we go. There's our financial program. And this is obviously for this scenario. There might be other scenarios where the interest is calculated before the payment or with the payment. So it depends on the scenario. They, they will have to give you clear instructions of how the calculation is done. And then you can work from there about how to apply that calculation inside a for loop. For more videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, um, subscribe, uh, give us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.